Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. I've got a very unique video for you today. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. I know I've been gone for a long time and I want to explain to you why. First of all, I want to apologize that I haven't been producing a video every week. We've just been crazy busy here and it actually started uh, in December. We rented a boat with another couple and sailed to Cuba. Cuba! Cuba! Befriended some of the locals and they ended up taking us around. Really, really a great time. They had a pig roast in our honor. And when I say a pig roast, we're not talking like a pig roast like you go to Hawaii and you know, all that kind of stuff. We actually get up early in the morning, okay, go to a farm, get the pig, bring it back and slaughter it. Let's just say the term, squeal like a pig, has an all new meaning to me. It is more horrifying than you can imagine. So I do have footage of it. Uh, we'll see if I show it to you or not. I don't know, maybe check the very end of the video. We'll see what happens. But we just had a great time. What a wonderful experience. When we came back, we have to check in in Key West, Florida. And at that same time, you get to connect to the real world again. You get to check your emails and stuff. Well, I had one from my landlord. And it basically said, we found somebody that wants to rent the entire building you're in, and they want to do a long-term lease. I was only renting a quarter of the space, and I was a short-term leaser. So let's just say they cut me off and said, you need to move out. And I had about two months to move out. So that gave me a month to finish the Ultimate Metrology Center, which hopefully I'll be finishing those videos soon. And then we had to move the entire shop, of course. I was very lucky. I wish you guys also were this lucky to have a brother like mine that actually came down and helped me not just move the shop, but also build out the new space. And I'll get into that a little bit more detail at the end of the video. My wife decided to start a new business called Artifact Home and Garden. So now I am head of furniture design. Whew, a lot of work and stuff, so that's kind of taken away some of my time, but I will start doing videos showing you some of the furniture de design because okay. it is a combination of metal and wood that I think you're really going to enjoy. We also had to go hit the market, which means we had to go shopping. And her stuff is all kind of vintage. So we went to Round Top, Texas. Where they where they have one of the world's largest antique shows. People from literally all over the world and go through all the booths. Now when I say go through all the booths, it's several miles worth. And Jennifer and I were there for four days. We didn't stop that whole time and we didn't see the whole thing. Bought a bunch of great stuff just to kind of get things going. I also picked up some new cabinets for the shop that I'm very excited about because they match my other ones. And now I think I have enough cabinets, if that's possible. <laughs> I hear a train 
that's rolling around the bed And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom prison during that visit, we went to Austin, Texas to visit Sportsmobile, and Sportsmobile is known for camper vans. Not just any camper van, but one that has a pop-up top and an incredible four-wheel drive system underneath. So they're very capable, and they match our lifestyle. As you guys know, one of the things we used to travel in is a 1973 Land Rover with a 1964 Apache pop-up tent trailer. We've gone thousands of miles. We've gone to Canada. We've gone through Mexico across the United States. So we have, well, driven the wheels off of that thing and now we're after something a little easier to, uh, to drive. And that's why we're at the Sportsmobile. Well, we got a chance to spend at least three hours with the president of the company just talking the different designs and configurations and what's possible. Well, we came out of the meeting and finally went, we don't know what we want, so we can't have one built right now. So I went on to Craigslist all over the United States and uh, found one in Silver City, New Mexico, flew into Albuquerque, took a very small plane. What was interesting about going on the small plane, I actually didn't have to go through any security. It was that small plane. But land in Silver City, the guy picked me up in the van, we drove it around, went out to breakfast, I took him back home and drove the van all the way back to Atlanta. But before I did that, I went, did some off-roading in New Mexico, went to uh, White Sands, New Mexico, all sorts of fun stuff. My wife was in Los Angeles that same weekend. She actually changed her plans, landed in Dallas, and I picked her up in the van and we headed home from there. So as you can see behind me, the party is starting to pick up. A couple people have gotten their Cuban haircuts. I'm gonna be up next, I'm gonna be... It's now time for John Saunders Open House at NYC CNC, also known as Saunders Machine Works. And we went to that, and I also got to teach a class on photography. Actually, there's three classes. What a great time to uh, go up there. He had uh, over 600 people show to his open house, plus a lot of vendors. Had a great time, got to meet some of the old YouTubers I know, like Brian Block, like, uh, Brad Jacob, Adam Booth, my good friend Jim Bollinger at Do Right Fabrication. I also got to meet some YouTubers I've been wanting to meet and have been watching for years. Of course, Mr. Pete. What a great time. He sat down next to me during lunch. We had just a wonderful conversation. So thank you, Mr. Pete. Also got to meet Jimmy Diresta. He gave me one of his ice picks. Now, I've been watching his channel for, I don't know, about a year now. And I've always wondered, what's up with the ice pick? Well, the ice pick, I don't think it has anything to do with ice. It just has to do with a cool tool that you can use for a lot of different applications. So Jimmy, thank you very much for this. Also, uh, a couple of us were supposed to bring up cannons. Somebody forgot theirs. But the night before the open house, we all got together and went and blew things up. And there's nothing better than getting a bunch of guys together and blowing things up. So take a look at this footage of the different cannons. A lot of fun. I think Jim Bollinger wins for the biggest cannon and the coolest cannon, at least in my humble opinion. Well, is that your field over there? Yeah. No, yeah, well, we're going to be sh where we're going to be shooting the right two is over here. It'll go in the That's a long way. That's 250 yards out of the tree. Yeah, on the back kind of. TSA got my knife. TSA got my knife. TSA got my knife. I probably shouldn't be standing in front of you. One of the things I was really looking forward to was meeting Robin Renzetti. And Robin knows more about machining, let's just say it this way, he's forgot more about machining in one day than I'll probably ever learn in my entire life. He is able to take machining and engineering and bring it together and quantify it in a way that I can understand it. So I find his channel full of great information. I find myself watching his videos more than once. 
I never fast forward through his videos. I also never watch his videos in fast forward. I know you guys can do you know, like a 1.25, 1.5 or two times faster. I don't do that with his. I'm actually more tempted to slow it down than I am to speed it up. You've got to check out Robin's channel. Also, do me a favor when you're there. Send him a note and say, hey Robin, Dale says you did a great class on grinding wheels for the surface grinder. Could you do a video of that? Okay guys, I'm asking this out of my own selfishness. I took his class at John Saunders. I learned more about grinding wheels in 30 minutes than I have known in the last three years. You gotta check out Robin Renzetti's YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. Actually, it'll be at the top of the link at the bottom. So easy to find, easy to check out. One of the great gifts I got on this trip was from Jim Glending, and it is the Machinist Bedside Reader. This is number one out of a series of three. They're no longer in publication. They kind of get expensive. He gave this to me as a gift to say thank you for my channel, and I got to say, Jim, thank you. This is one of the highlights, I've got to say. Wonderful book. Also got a shirt from Ludinka. I think that's the way you pronounce it keep it running. They build laser measuring stuff to line your machines. Here's one of the fun things. This is an anonymous gift. Uh, Jimmy Jaressa got, a, got one similar to it. Guy came by with a box of stuff for the YouTubers to kind of go through. Uh, Jimmy ended up getting a super chuck like this one, but he got the 20. This one here is the 18N and the key. Gotta have the key. So thank you to the mystery man. I gotta say, visiting John Saunders was a great highlight to the week. Now we're back home, and let's go to the shop tour. All right, let's get started with the shop tour. I know you guys have been wanting to see it, what's been going on here. Some of the frustrating things is, as you know, I haven't had time to actually finish the shop which is kind of a general term. I don't think anybody ever finishes a shop. They just get it adequate enough to use. And that's where we're at right here. Um, I've got enough shop to use. I've got lights, kind of. They're just plugged into wherever I could plug them into. So the lighting in here is not very good. Some of the good things is the wall behind me is finished. The back grinding room is finished. One thing we don't have in here is enough electricity. I got bogged down in rewiring the panel. The panel is very scary here. I actually had 30 amp circuits on 15 amp wire. Um, let's just say big fire hazard. I had some circuits in the house where I had two breakers on one circuit. So even if you shut off one breaker, the other one was still keeping that circuit live. Um, really just kind of slowed me down a little bit on getting this wired and then we started traveling again so I've got to bring some wire in here we also have to bring in a three-phase converter so right now I'm so busy with artifact and building stuff for my wife's new company that I don't have the luxury of time that I used to but I'm gonna be trying to set up giving you guys new videos a lot new um, content in a different direction which I think I, you guys will really enjoy we're still going to be doing some machining but we're also going to be doing some metal fabrication forging steel finishing steel and different techniques also doing a little bit of woodworking yes I'm going to the dark side of woodworking but you guys are gonna to have to deal with it kind of getting geared up for it I had a great unisaw when I left the shop I sold it I had a second table saw that I figured oh, I'll fix it up when I get time. I haven't used my unisaw in about two years. No big deal, now I need a table saw. So actually today I'm gonna to be going upstairs and mounting a new motor in it. Let's take a look at the, the shop, kind of the way it's configured, like I said. You guys are just gonna to have to live with the mess. But I've got enough to show you because it also was interesting when I got to meet like Mr. Pete and Jimmy DeResta, both of them and a couple of other YouTubers asked me the same question. They said, so did you finish the basement? Have you moved your shop in? So this is out to you YouTubers that have been curious about where the shop is. Some of the people were really concerned about this back area, which is actually now storage, and getting it sealed up. All the corners have been sealed. We put spray foam in them, paint over it, finish it up. We still got work up here that needs to be done. I was really fortunate, like I said, to have my brother Terry here 
to help do all the sheetrock work. And now the sheetrock work, you guys got to understand that we're in a house that we're living in. And if you've ever done sheetrock work, the dust gets everywhere. So one of the things I told Terry is we're not allowed to do any sanding at all. Okay. So he said, sure, I can do that. And he nailed it. So back here, you get to see the bench that I had originally set up in the other shop. You can see the stickers from different YouTubers. Also, I got a 50 inch TV. So I'm really making this into a man cave. And I think it makes sense since it's in the basement. And now what's funny is you guys, you don't really know this, but I'm not a big TV watcher. I don't believe in having a TV, but I got to keep up with my YouTube channel. So that's actually what this is put in here for is not watching TV, but actually uh, YouTube. I also don't watch football. I know it's kind of funny to have a man cave without watching football, but that's okay. Up here we have our 3D printer. One of these days I actually shot an entire video on that and lost the footage, so I'll actually do another one. Back here is the scary box of power. Now I've kind of done some shortcuts for right now just to get some electricity going. So that's one reason it looks scary, but in addition, it already is scary. Here is some of the new um, drawers that I picked up, and these are going to all be set up with different nuts and bolts. I think of these now as becoming more of, I don't want to say storage, I want to say supplies. This is where I'm going to start keeping all of my supplies that can fit in these drawers. More vertical cabinets. I've got another one coming in. I've got my uh, Enco milling machine torn down. That was supposed to just be a quick tear down, paint it, put it back together again, maybe a little light scraping. Um, then of course you find out there's some problems so you got to go into a little bit further. I'm going to scrape this machine so it's good enough for a machinist, not a tool and die maker, but it will be a really nice machine. I'm sorry there's not going to be a video on this particular scraping job because I need to get it up and running. I did buy another um, bridge port that I am going to do an entire scraping video on. I think you guys will really like and hopefully that will be getting started someday. I ended up putting in a chain hoist. Since I have I-beams throughout here, I decided I'd just take advantage of that. Over here is the Enco lathe. And I'm going to just stick with the Enco lathe down here. I'm not going to put in the big lathe because it's too much work to bring down here for now. And this corner here is going to be where the milling machine goes. Here is the cabinet that corresponds to the milling machine. Now let's take you into the grinding room. You guys know I love it, the grinding room. Problem with this grinding room is it hasn't even gotten used. You can tell because the walls are very, very clean in here. And uh, well, they'll get dirty someday. I need to get three phase power in here. That's the drawback right now. Check out this cabinet here. That is one of the great cabinets. I think I should show you guys what's in here. Let's uh, pick, no, let's not do that one. Let's try, no, 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 no. Let's, let's go to this one. These are the magnetic chucks that I have. These are, this is a compound magnetic chuck. And this one here, you guys probably saw the video on. I should put a link to that. Down here, more tooling. More tooling. More tooling. More tooling. And more tooling. The last six months I've been collecting tooling. Uh, just, just a fantastic cabinet. Of course, there's another cabinet. It's mostly empty. Um, well, no, not really, but uh, out here, another cabinet, identical to that one. And the tooling for this is set up for, well, it's not really set up, but it's more or less stuff for the milling machine. Really a nice collection of items. Uh, let's see, we're going to set up, um, grinders are going to be up against the window. Don't know why I'm doing that. It's probably one of the dumbest things I can do is put grinders that swing things and throw things. But uh, that's where they're at right now. 
Here's the welders. Now I'm going to take you outside to see actually where I've been doing a lot more of my work just because it's messy and I get to be outside. We're working on this bookcase right now. Very unique design. What makes this unique is it's very hard to build anything with a curve in it. And see, not to curve it, but structurally, you're basically making springs, so you have to design into it supports and basically box in the frame to give it structure. Forge here in the corner, because some of the parts I was working on, I was needing to actually twist to fit into position, and of course I needed heat there. I can have a welder out here, and this welder, of course, is on wheels. But you guys have never got to see one of my welding carts. It is probably the coolest way to build a welding cart. It is a three drawer file. So two small ones and one big one. What's great about the bottom is you can actually, it's big enough to put an entire helmet in it. And then it's on wheels, carries the tank with it. All the supplies I need with this welder are right here, so I'm not chasing them. So this is kind of the back area. We also put in a canvas. It's a 10 by 20 canvas. It's just been a crazy, crazy year. A lot of traveling, a lot of getting out. We've reached over 55,000 subscribers. Very exciting to watch the channel grow. And I feel I owe you guys more. You've been just so wonderful. Your comments, uh, your support to the channel, and I just wanna say thank you. Also, you can check me out on Facebook and also Instagram to see what I'm up to. Hopefully, really soon, we're gonna be getting back into the group of doing a video every week. All right, you guys, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool, thanks.